to that land, come and go, to that land, yeah, come and go, to that land, where I bow, yes, come and go, to that land, come and go, to that land, yeah, come and go. Go to that land where I'm bound. Peace and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land. Yeah, peace and happiness in that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Yeah, peace and happiness in that land. Peace and happiness in that land where I'm bound. Oh, nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Yeah, nothing but joy in that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Yeah, nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land, yeah. Nothing but joy in that land where I'm bound. Oh, I got a mother in that land. I got a mother in that land, yeah. I got a mother in that land. Yeah. 
Let it be real. Amen. Amen. Truly, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Not because you've been so good and so great, but because of his grace and his mercy. He allowed your golden days to roll on just a little while long. But somebody, you ought to tell him, thank you this morning. Have he done anything for you? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he put food on your table? Did he put a roof over your head? I tell you, he's a good God. Welcome to our Men's Day program. I, I didn't know I was on. I didn't know I was on the program today to do nothing, but I guess I'm about to do something. Anyhow, we want to welcome you, uh, Friendship Baptist Church, Pastor Amen. Amen. Daniels, and Amen. your congregation, and all our waiting guests, and to all the Springfield, the deacons, the officers, the members of this church. We welcome you. Our scripture this morning is going to come from Psalms number one. Psalms number one. All right. Psalm number one, and when you find these words, you'll find these words recorded. You said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not stand in the ways of sinners, not set it in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season. His leaves shall also not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And the people said, Amen. Amen. It's prayer time. Somebody might be wondering, prayer changes things. It's been a long week now, and a lot of stuff been going on in your life. And just forget about all that and concentrate on him. For he's worthy to be praised. No matter what's been going on in your life, God is still able. Amen. You can tell the mountain to move yonder if you have just a little faith in the mountain to move. Just a little bit. So, so let us pray unto God to, to strengthen us. So forget about yourself and yeah. just concentrate on him. Forget about all the bills and all the things going on in life. Forget about the COVID that you might think, well, I'm in there, I'm going to catch it. Forget about it because God is in control. Right. And he knows right. everything and he's right. able to do all right. things. So let us approach the throne of heaven with a bowed head and an arm of heart. Eternal Lord, our Father, is once again, I come now. A Father, I come this morning in no shape, form, or fashion, yes. Father, but I come as the empty picture standing before a full fountain. Well. Father, I come now asking you to forgive me for my sin, for I know I have sinned and come short of your glory. Yes. But because of your grace and your mercy, grace. you allowed my days to roll on just a little while thank long. You, Lord. And for that, Father, I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Then, Father, I thank you for every church that is open today in your name. Yeah. Father, I pray now for Greater Springfield. Father, I pray right now, that Lord, right you now. bless them, not only Greater Springfield, but faithful in all friendship in every <laughs> church, Father, that is open, Father. Yeah. Bless yeah. the pastor, Father. Bless Allow them Lord. to go down into deep recesses of your word, Father, that they may come out preaching a bold and uncompromising word that somebody might say, what must I do to be yeah. saved? Yeah. Father, we come this morning and just to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you for our last night laying down in our early morning ride. Well. Father, thank you for seeing your angel down this morning and touching us with a fingertip of love. Well. And for that, Father, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Then, Father, we turn around we ask you to bless those who are in bereavement. Yeah. Let them know that earth have no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Yeah. Father, we come this morning just to tell you thank you. Thank you. Then, Father, I think about our prayer. Is. Uh, Father, once again, I ask you to bless our mother of the church, Sister Hall. Father, I ask you to continue to watch over, guide her, and protect her yeah. as she travels up and down the dangerous highways, Father. Yeah. Then, Father, I pray for Mother Hinton over here. Father, let
let her know that she's still in control. That God is still able to do all things. Uh, then, Father, I pray for Sister Carter. Uh, then, Father, I pray for her friend, Brother William Trice. Let him know, Father, that he's still all right with him. Uh, let him know that God is still in control. Uh, he's too powerful to do anything wrong. It's too just to do anything wrong. For that, Father, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, for those who now might be in the hospital. Uh, let them know that a doctor might be the gave them the last word, but uh, you still in control. Uh, you got more medicine in the hem of your gummies than yes, all the yes, pharmaceutical sir. gummies in the world. And for that, Father, we just want to tell yes, you sir. thank you. Then, Father, I ask you to bless everyone here under the sound of my weak voice. Uh, some come for one thing and some come for another. But, Father, yes, I know you know it all. And right now we just want to tell you thank you. You've been good to us. Then, Father, when we've done all we can do, well, when we go into our room, Father, well, when we sing our last song and pray our last prayer, yeah. Father, we ask you to give us a seat somewhere around your kingdom yeah. that we may be able to praise you forevermore. For it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray and we ask it all. Amen. 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 It's time now. To give back to those who are less fortunate than us. Yeah. You know, he said we we're going to have the poor among the always. I remember the disciple coming and said, telling the woman, why are you using this expensive oil to wipe the wipe his feet and then you'll have the cleanest feet? He said, leave this woman alone because you will have the poor among you always. So always. we are going to have them. So this time we set aside to give back just a portion that the officers will come to take up our Neverland offering to set aside this amount for them in times of need. Amen. One more time, Lord, one more time. Oh, one more time, Lord, oh, one more time. And Lord, I'm glad to be in your service one more time. Oh, one more time, Lord, one more time. Oh, one more time, Lord, one more time. And Lord, I'm glad to be your servant one more time. Oh, one more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. And Lord, I'm glad to be your servant. My mother was here today. These are the words you will hear us say. Lord, I'm glad to be in your service one more time. One more time, Lord, one more time. One more time, Lord. Father was here today. But these are the words you will hear him say. And Lord, I'm glad to be in your service one more time. Eternal God, our Father, once again we come. Now, Father, we come. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, but most of all, what our heart has felt. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this all. Bless That's those who all. gave and those that had died out of gear, but was unable to give. Now, Father, we pray that it be used for the benefit in which you were taken. For we give all the praise to you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we will have our welcome by Brother Larry Burke. Welcome and announcement. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Morning. First, I'd like to start by giving all yeah. honor, praise, grace, and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Cunningham, Bless First Lady, you. members, guests, we'd like to welcome you to Greater Springfield Men's Day program. A few good men. Prayer, sick, and shut in this. We 
that the prayer for Sister Jenny Bell Benson, Sister Akira Detroit Cook, Sister Belinda Cook, Brother William Trice, and anybody else that I may have missed that you know who needs a prayer. Amen. 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 Our announcements, Family and Friend Day, Great Springfield Baptist Church, 24th of July, 11 a.m. Guest speaker will be Reverend Ernest Thomas III. Pastor Black Rock Baptist Church, Wavy Hall, Georgia. Fifth Sunday brunch, scheduled after service on the 31st of July. Please join us for great food and fellowship. We would like to thank you in advance, Sister Lisa Burton, for the delicious fellowship. Amen. Our quarterly finance reports are available. Members, please see Deacon Hinton after service for a copy. Amen. 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 Thanks. We would like to thank all of you for gracing us with your presence on this men's day. Special thanks to the men of Springfield for organizing such a spiritful, spirit-filled event. We ask for God's <coughs> blessings for each one of you. Pastor and First Lady William C. Cunningham. Amen. 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 All right, I'd like to also read uh, a little poem, a few good, a few good men. All right, set it up, man. Amen. Amen. A willing man of God, that is what he needs. Want to carry out some now neglected needs, deeds. One that will stand up so proud and so tall. Time is right now. Right now. Our backs against the wall. Amen. A man that can love and one that can cry. He will always fight and is unafraid to die. Someone with passion deep in this world. One who moves on. Through insults, though insults are hurled. Amen. A man that will stand up with honor in his heart. Taking back our family that sin is torn apart. A willing man of God, working without flaws, raising up the shield of faith, taking on the cause. A man for a dying world to go against the grain. His love, though, and gentle, and though he trains, his word should be the truth and nothing but sure. Living in the ugly world, where nothing is still pure. Come on. He can use a man who once was down and out, the one who used to be full of nothing but self-doubt. A willing man of God that will call all sin, sin. He doesn't need big numbers, just a few good men. Amen. Save it up for me, God. Amen. <laughs> also, Love Spring CME Church, God's House on Highway 36, 6439, Georgia Highway 36 West, Tarleton, Georgia, 31827, where friends hold fellowship with friends. Reverend Lisa Terry, pastor. We'd like for you to come celebrate with them. It's our anniversary. Join us as we celebrate 150 years of God's faith. Amen. 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 Church anniversary, July 17, 2022, at 11 a.m. Guest speaker will be Pastor Vicki Taylor, New Life Community Baptist Church. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers who dwell together in you. Amen. Psalms 31, 133, verse 1. Lunch will be served afterward. Are there any announcements that I may have missed? If not, I'll pass it over to the pastor. Amen. 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 It's now time for our tithes and offering. We're going to ask Deacon Austin and Deacon Dixon if they would come to help Greater Springfield Amen. take up this offering. Amen. We want to start out by saying you cannot be God's giving Amen. no matter how hard you try. <laughs> Because the God we serve, he gave his very best Amen. when he gave us his only begotten son. Yes, Amen. So we ask you to give out of the abundance of your heart. We're now in the hands of the officers.
as everyone given. Still got time. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, once again, we come with thanksgiving in our heart. We come thanking you, Father God, for all the many blessings that you have shown forth toward us this day. And we thank you for this offering, Father God, that it may be used for the uplifting building of your kingdom down here. Bless everybody that gave. Bless those who had it not to give, that they may be able to give on the next time. It is in your precious son, Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And we do say amen, 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 and amen amen again. We know Pastor Cunningham have prayed. I didn't want him to pray all the prayer. <laughs> Amen. It just all him and him always joke a little bit. Amen. But it says, altar call in place, the way we do it at Friendship. We give the congregation an opportunity. If God has placed somebody on your heart, it's an opportunity to call out names. <laughs> with the understanding that the God we serve, he will listen and hear your petition. It may be somebody in the hospital. It may be a family member who have strayed away. It may be a coworker, no matter what it is, God is waiting to hear your petition. We're gonna ask you to stand, and then we're gonna ask you if there's somebody on your heart, no matter how small you may think it is, or how large it may be, call out the names right now before we approach God's throne of grace. Amen. Me and my family. Amen. Praise Rufus and Barbara, his rackets family. George Smith and Frontier. Amen. Pastor Will Rayford and the Greater New Jerusalem Baptist Church. We also want to lift up Friendship Baptist Church. Greater Springfield. Baptist Church. Amen. All other churches in the, in the area that are open in his name. Is there anybody else? Amen. Anybody else? We don't want to leave nobody out. Let us pray just for a little while. Merciful and gracious God, once again we approach your throne of grace with thanksgiving. We come this morning realize that we all stand in the need of prayer. Yes. We come realizing, Father God, that there's danger and trouble all around us. Yes. It was just last night you allowed us to slumber and sleep. Yes. But it was early this morning you touched us with a finger of your precious love. Yes. And then you woke us up on due time. Yes. And that's enough, Lord, to tell you, thank you. And not only that, Father God, that you put food on our table. Yeah. Then you put us in our old raggedy car. Yeah. Allow us to drive down the dangerous highways yeah. and byways. Yeah. To get to little old greater Springfield. Yeah. And not only that, Father God, you protected us yeah. from all hurt, harm, or danger. Yeah. Both danger seen and unseen. Yeah. And simply, Lord, we say thank you. Yeah. But not only that, Father God, we thank you for our house. We thank you for the roof over our head. Yeah. We thank you for our family that is doing well and fine as it is. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, yeah. for all that you have done to this day, up to this point, because we have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. But then, Father God, we heard the roll call. Yeah. The different name that was called out. My Lord. Father God, you know their need. Mm -hmm. You know their condition. Yeah, yeah. You know their circumstance. Yeah. Father God, but we ask you now. Right now. Down from heaven above. That 
that you'll touch every person under the sound of my weak voice. Not only touch them, Father God, that they will testify of your grace and your mercy. That it was you, Lord, that put running in their shoes. It was you, Lord, that gave them activities of their limb. It was you, Lord, that gave them a portion of their health and strength. That it was you, Lord, that clothed us in our right mind. And so, Lord, we simply say thank you. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And I can't praise you enough. Because as I look back over my life, and see all that I have done. Yes, but you rescued me. Yes. You saved me. Yes. And like Paul, I say your grace. Your grace, your grace Lord. Your grace. It is sufficient. Yes. It is made perfect. Yes. In our weakness. Yes. And Lord, I simply want to say thank you. Lord. Yes. So answer our prayers right now. Right now. Continue to bless Pastor Cunningham. Right and his lovely wife. And the greater Springfield Baptist Church, Father God. Continue to let them go in your name and your name alone. Keep this congregation together. Help them to look to the hills which come at their help. And know that all of their help, oh Lord, comes from you. This is your servant prayer. This is our petition. Because you're able to do anything but fail. Yeah. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bless our service on today. Bless everything that we do in your name. Yes. And when we have gone the last mile of the way, yes. we ask you to give us a home somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in your kingdom, yes. that we can praise you all the days of our life. Yes. It is in Jesus' name in we Jesus pray. Name. We do say amen, 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 amen. and amen, amen again. Amen. You may be seated. We now have <laughs> the introduction of the guest speaker. I ain't no guest no more, y'all. I just want to let y'all know that. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Men's Day. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I want to thank Greater Springfield, Reverend Cunningham, and his beautiful wife. Amen. Amen. Given the task of introducing my husband. <laughs> I have known him so long until now, it been taking such a long time to introduce him. I started writing stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna Set. shout it up today. We're not gonna take that long. Set it up. <laughs> but he he is my sweetheart. Yes. His father. I'm gonna start out by saying. He's a native of Fort Gaines, Georgia. Yeah. He's the third son of the Reverend Jeremy Daniels and Catherine Daniel. And he received his education in Clay County Education System, which converted with my high school in 1981. So we graduated high school together. Mm -hmm. And before then, I, when we combined the two counties, I already knew him because his father was my pastor. Amen. So we talk, up, we've been married for 32 years, well, well, well. 38 years. 38 years. 38 years, okay. but I've known him for like 45. Okay. Look at God. Well, Look at God. He's the father of three beautiful daughters. Um, the, our oldest daughter is deceased, Latrice, and uh, we still have Domika and Janelle. Amen. And um, he served in the military yes, for 32 years. <laughs> We've been all over. I said you when I say all over, I mean country, 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 <laughs> Germany, <laughs> Korea, Japan, Amen. Germany. We've been all over. But um, he was called to preach in December 2014. Amen. I've seen him received several awards. I, I received him seen, receive awards for being a command sergeant major in the military. Mm -hmm. I seen him being, receive awards for being um, an outstanding father. 
but I've never been so proud of him when he received the, walk, the call from the Lord. Amen. 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 Right. And I tell you today, he's a man that can preach his sermon Amen. with the grace of, by the grace of God. Amen. And he's a man after your head and your heart. The heart, he sought the education from the Lord with a seminary degree from Liberty University. He has several degrees, I'm not gonna name them all. Remember I said I was gonna make this short and sweet. <laughs> and his heart, he has a heart like David. He's a man after God's own heart. And he's the, his discernment of his word. He studied all the time to show himself approved. He's a workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly divided the word of truth. He's the author of three devotional books. Amen. And if you want to get your day started right in the morning, get one of his books. Amen. Yeah, you know I have to toot my horn. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, he's a wonderful family man. And in 2018, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church called for us to come down. And I felt the love soon as we walked in the building. And he's been there ever since. He's the pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. And um, we love them so much. Everywhere we go, we have our pockets. They're going to come with us. And I want to say that um, at this point, I want you to point your hand toward the pulpit and say, Pastor Daniel, Pastor Daniel. Preach, preach the Holy Word. The Holy Word. Pastor Daniel, Pastor Daniel. Preach, preach God's Holy Word. Wow. God's Holy Word. Wow. And I want to introduce to some, present to others, Pastor James P. Daniels. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. I got one of my members who's going to sing for me, if that's all right. Amen. How you doing? All right. How you doing? My pastor will to throw his members under the bus. <laughs> he ready. But they ain't found him to throw me under yet. All right. All right. She ready. She ready. She stay ready. So many times the Lord made a way for me. Thank you, Jesus. So many times the Lord made a way for me. He picked me up. Sometimes I was up, oh yes 
Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again we come standing behind this sacred desk. We come realizing we cannot preach unless in you show up. Yeah. So I ask you to allow me to be a willing vessel right now. Yes. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are strength and our redeemer. Yeah. Bless the greater Spring, Springfield Baptist Church, Father God. Yeah, yeah. Bless the pastor. Yeah. Bless these men, Father God, as they seek to do your will. Yeah. Give them strength right now, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Equip them with everything they need to be a witness to your power, your presence. Father God, to let everybody know that Christ is the risen Savior. Have your way in this service right now. Have your way in this service right now. Father God, allow me to preach with power and conviction that your word may go forth to touch somebody. Father God, we need you in this dying world. We need you in this corrupt world. There's killing on every corner. Our young men are going straight to prison, giving up all of their freedom. Help somebody to touch them and let them know that your way is the right way, but the world way is the wrong way. Help us to be a light in this dark place. As Jesus said, we are the light of the world. Bless us on today. For these and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name, we do pray. And we do say, Amen. 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 To Pastor Willie and First Lady Cunningham, First Lady Daniels, Greater Springfield Church family, the Friendship Church family, officers, visitors, and friends. I have a request from a good friend, Pastor Will Rayford. He asked me if I would read this to the Greater Springfield Baptist Church. Amen. So I'm going to be obedient, Pastor Cunningham. Amen. He say from the Greater Jerusalem Baptist Church, Pastor Cunningham, oh, my friend that's in the audience, you know who you are. <laughs> I pray for a wonderful service today. I wanted to come, but the service was at the same time as mine's. He says, be blessed. Amen. I asked Pastor Cunningham if that was a specific scripture. He said, just preach. 
He said, just go with what's in your heart. So as I looked at the program, as I always do, I found a little blab right there. Just look at the words from your program before I text my text. It says, a few good men. He said, a man will stand up with honor in his heart. And at the end it said, he doesn't need big numbers, just a few good men. <laughs> right there, I, I just want to take that right there if you will look in your Bible. Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 45, through 45. And I just hope you can see what I can see. As the preacher takes his text, he only wants you to vision what he visioned. In other words, to capture what he captured. In other words, what David says as you're turning there, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Right there, Luke chapter 6, verse 43 through 45. And from the words of Luke, you'll find these words penned. For a good tree, Bring him not forth corrupt fruit. Neither do a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For the thorns men do not gather figs, nor a bramble bush gather they grapes. But here's where I want to take my text from. Verse 45. A good man. Good man. Out of the good treasures of his heart, yeah. bring forth that which is good. And an evil man, well. out of the evil treasures of his heart, bring it forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. And my brothers and sisters, as I begin to look at your theme, I just want to add one word to the front of it. Looking for a few good men. <laughs> I just added one word, y'all. I didn't change that now. <laughs> I just say looking for a few good men. Amen. I told my wife in the car, I said, look, I got to go in, get a little Sunday school. <laughs> because I just felt I needed to just break the ice just a little bit. You know how you go into a place that you've never been before and you just want to get a feel for how things is. And I felt I need to come in, Pastor Cunningham, just so I can make not my name known, just so I can just feel at home. And just to break the ice this morning, I just want the ladies just to listen at this this occasion, just to break the ice, and just listen at this story for a second. And I hope you find laughter just as I did, because I believe it's appropriate for the subject. It says a woman visit an attorney, and she was fed up with her husband and wanted a divorce. And she says to the attorney, I wish to file for a divorce. And he says, do you have the grounds for the divorce? She says, yes, I have approximately a half an acre. <laughs> come on, y'all, come on, break that. Come on, loosen up a little bit now, come on. Now. He says, no, I mean, do you have a grudge? She says, no, we have a carport. Come on, help me out. Come on, now, y'all. He says, no. Do you beat your husband up? She said, yes, I beat him up every morning. <laughs> come on, y'all, come on. Finally, the lawyer 
was frustrated. Asked the woman, why do you want a divorce? She said, my husband, my husband doesn't understand me. Sometimes we communicate, but he don't really understand what I'm saying. So my brothers and sisters this morning, that many of us probably don't understand the men because we all got different ways. We got different attitudes. But God created everything good. And we have to learn to accept the good with the bad. We have to learn to trust one another. This is the way I say it. We're better together. Because we should be able to pick up each other bad points and make them good. Amen. Let's be honest this morning. Looking, the word look, it means to glance. It means to view. It means to focus. It means to examine. It means to consider. Pastor Cunningham, it means to preview. Whatever it is, you should be looking for a good man. Amen. He won't always come dressed up in a three-piece suit. That's right, that's right, that's right. He won't always have on a bow tie. Amen. He won't always have on Stacy Adams shoes, Pastor Cunningham. Right, right, <laughs> he might not have on Steve Harvey's suit. Right, but whatever way he come, you should accept him for who he is. Because he's God's man. And because God's man, God created him. So my brothers and sisters, society have pointed and painted a picture which is negative of all men. Look at the news. It says all men are messed up. That's what the news say. There are no good men. I know you heard it. I ain't the only one. Yeah. You look in the, in the magazine, it said there are no good men out there. Right. But don't you know there's a few? Don't you know there are a few yes, good men? And as we celebrate today, Pastor Cunningham, I want to ask the question, what makes a man good? That should be your question today. Because my question might be different from you. In other words, my answer might be different to you because you may be looking for something that I'm not looking for. But whatever you're looking for, don't you know God got it? He's able to supply all of your needs. Whatever you're looking for. But in our text today, it said a good man is all about the heart. It's in your heart. If you don't put nothing in, don't you know you can't get nothing out? A man had an account at Wells Fargo. But he went to Synovus. And you know he couldn't get his money because he was in the wrong Come on, help me, somebody. He was in the wrong bank. So if you don't put it in the right place, don't you know you can't make no withdrawal? And this is what our text is saying today. Amen. God has given us a heart. But if you don't now put nothing in, you can't never withdraw nothing out. And don't you know God made all things perfect? I can prove it to you. Yes. Humanity started in the book of Genesis when God created man in his image. Wow. There in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him man. Male and female created him them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, 
be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all things. So God created a good man. Yes, he did. But then something happened, Pastor Cunningham. Because everything that looked good ain't always good for you. This is how we have to be careful. Because there in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says the lust of the flesh took over Adam and Eve. And because of that, the Bible says sin entered the world. But I got good news for you today. Whenever there is a great need, don't you know God got somebody? I can prove it to you. Just say you've been working on the job 20 years and you think you got it going on. Don't you know they'll fire you and have somebody in your position the next day? Or I can make it even better, Pastor God, die and think they won't feel your slot. (laughs) I'm just saying God always got somebody to do his bidding. This is why the sign says always at work. Because God is always working to ensure somebody is always in position. I can prove it to you. So it's kind of ham. I remember down at Friendship in Revival, me and Pastor Cunningham had a conversation. He probably don't remember. He said, Pastor, I ain't ready to pastor. I said, man, just as sure as you said those words, God is working in your favor. (laughs) And you know what he called me a couple of months after that? What did you tell me, Cunningham? He said, man, I think I'm being called to pastor. (laughs) Because God knows what we need. And if you're available, don't you know God is already working in your favor? And this is why in our background scripture today, the text I chose, because Luke puts things in a perspective. Now, Luke was not a disciple. He was a physician. How is a physician going to know anything about fruit? (laughs) But he knows something about the heart. Yeah. This is why I picked this scripture today because Luke is a physician. He knows that if the heart is not functioning right, don't you know you ain't going to have blood flow going to the right parts of your physical body? So, but he writes in a spiritual analogy to remind you the same way your spiritual heart needs a heart and your physical body needs a heart, If they're not function at max capacity, the other parts of the body will not function at maximum potential. So my brothers and sisters, Luke said, look at here. It's about Jesus. Everything, all roles point to Jesus. He said, remind them, everything is about discipleship. The message that he's having, if you have not looked over this, the message that Luke is saying is, Jesus is reminding his followers, everything has to do with discipleship. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to go from the first. I'm not going to be long today, y'all. Cunningham told me I had about two hours, but I'm not going to take that long. (laughs) Just kidding, y'all. I'm just only kidding. In one case, Jesus reminds them that if any man should come after him, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow him. Throughout his ministry, Jesus used parables, Cunningham, to paint a picture to compel others to follow at the righteousness. Now, if you got your Bible, though, I'm not going to be. There's, there's about five illustrations in chapter number six. And I'm not going to be long. The first illustration Jesus used was, he said, the blind cannot lead the blind. It's right there in your text. 
He said the blind will not, cannot lead the blind. Jesus said because both of them will end up in the ditch. It's right there. The second illustration, Jesus says a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like the teacher. Look at it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, in the third illustration, deals with the speck in the plane. The speck causes our eyes to become irritated, leaving things blurry. Have you ever forgot to put on goggles and you cut your grass and all the debris blows up in your face and your eyes become irritated and you wish you would have had on your goggles. <laughs> this is what Jesus is saying. You cannot see straight because everything is blurry. But then he said, then there is the plank, the stick that is in your eye that caused you not to see straight. But he says unto us today, without 2020 spiritual vision, you cannot see straight. We know if you don't have 2020 in the physical, they give you glasses. That's right. mm -hmm. But what about in the spiritual realm? Mm -hmm. When you say, I can't see that. Mm -hmm. But God said it. Yes. yes. We don't walk by. We walk by. Amen. Why you keep saying you can't see that? <laughs> you ain't supposed to see it. Because if you trust, trust, if you trust God, yes, the man says, I can't see the whole stairway. But if you don't take the first step, you ain't going to see none of the stairway. Because you can't climb the stairway until you take the first step. And this is what God's saying, you cannot see what I see because you won't take the first step. All right, man. And then there is a key verse today. The Lord is telling the disciples that their ministry is to be a ministry of character. Mm -hmm. What they are more important to anything that they will ever say and do. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, preacher? The best sermon that you will ever preach is the one that you live. That's right. All right. Amen. Amen. Jesus said you can say a whole lot of words. Yes, yes. But if your life never lines up, well, well, well. You just full of words. <laughs> and the world will never know yes. who you are. Yes. Because you're not living what you're preaching. That's right. The final result of their service will be determined in what they are in themselves. In this fourth illustration, which is in our text today, the Lord uses the tree and his fruits. Yes. He says a tree bears fruit, whether good or bad, depending on what is in itself. It's right there. In other words, Jesus said we judge a tree by the kind and the quality of the fruit that it bears. Amen. Can I make it this plain? Yes. An apple tree can only bear apples. Now if you see oranges on an apple tree, <laughs> we got problems. He says an orange tree cannot bear bananas. He said the tree must bear the fruit that it was created for. Amen. That's right. Amen. All right. That's right. So this is why God is saying you identify mm -hmm. with the fruit that you're bearing. Amen. That's right. If you want to bear good fruit, mm -hmm. you got the word. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. Now if you want to bear, bear bad fruit, mm -hmm. now you add the L to word, and you know what you get, right? The world. You get the world. Come on, help me out, said Daniel. All right. Because with just dropping the L mm -hmm. will make a whole lot of difference in All your right. life. Right. Because adding the L, you add the lust of the flesh. 
You add the lust of the life. You add the pride of life. I'm just saying, by adding the L to word, you mess up your whole situation. So my brothers and sisters, this is what he says. He said everything is based on what you put in. If you put in evil, you will put out evil. If you put in good, and then you'll always have good. And maybe the men today asking, I don't know what I will be doing 10 years from now. But the songwriter says, I don't know. But I believe. I believe I'll be serving the Lord. Because it's in my heart. <laughs> he said, because it's in, it's in my heart. So what we speak of is often based on the overflow of the heart. So my brothers and sisters, you can't make no withdrawal if you don't ever put anything in. And this is why David says in Psalm 19, 119 and 11, David said, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yes, yes, yes. So in the area of discipleship, talking to the men, you must have a devotion plan. Yes. You must have a prayer plan. Yes. You must cover your family daily. Yes. Even when you don't feel like it. Yes. Even when you're tired, you must cover your family. Yes. Because this is what God asks of us as men to be the head of our family. But it starts. It starts with the heart. So Luke says, a man who is morally pure and spiritually healthy can bring forth blessing for others out of the good treasures of his heart. On the other hand, a man who is basically impure only brings forth evil. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus says, with every man, there's two sides of the coin. There is no in-between. There is no lukewarm. You're either one or the other. He said you're either good or you bad. <laughs> He said, that, he, said that, he said, there's no middle ground. Right. You're either on one side or you're on the other. Right. And what he's saying to us today, man, you can't have one foot in the door yeah. what you say? and one foot in the world. Right. <laughs> he's saying to us today, that won't work. Because yeah. eventually, yes. you're going to become bankrupt. Mm-hmm. And when you become bankrupt, you can't go no further. No further. My brothers and sisters, as I prepare to close out today, well, well, well. Jesus says, out of the, a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. Yes, yes. And an evil man, out of the good, evil treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Yes. But here's the key to this. I often wonder why Jesus say things. Have you ever wondered why? Because whenever Jesus speaks, he's preparing you for what he's speaking next. Now look at the next few verses toward the end of the chapter. He set things up. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing which I say? (laughs) And what he's saying here, you say you love me, but you ain't doing it. You say you believe me, but you don't trust me. Jesus said, but you hear my word, but you never put them into practice. He said, if you're going to put things into practice, then you must do my word. What are you saying? You must follow the instructions. Let me make it, let me go right down the women alley. Who makes a cake and don't read the instructions? The man says, it didn't come out like Betty Crocker because she didn't follow the instruction. 
It said add three eggs, not four eggs. Yeah. See, if you start adding stuff, yeah. it can't be better cracking no more. Because you're adding your own ingredient. Don't you know they've already tested Betty Crocker over and over? That if you add three eggs, yeah. that if you add a half a cup of oil, and you add a half a thing of water, and you put it at 350 degrees and put it in the oven, don't you know it's going to come out the same every time? Yeah. <laughs> so, and what Jesus is saying today, you got to follow the instruction. But he goes on. He said, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to him he is like. He's like a man which builds his house on a rock. But he goes on. He said, and when the flood arose and the screen beat vehemently upon that house, it could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Yes. So the question, what is your foundation on? All right. That's right. Because he gives us the next scenario. Mm-hmm. But he that heareth and do not is like a man without a foundation. <laughs> Built his house upon the earth against it which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. <laughs> And the ruins of that house was great. So as we consider this occasion, consider these three points today. Yes. Men, the head. The head, number one. Man's divine position in the family is to be the head. The headship of the man has been clearly spelled out in the Bible. God created man to have dominion and to be the head of the household. With man in their rightful place, home is protected. Home is provided for. Adam was created first, followed by Eve. The woman was created to be a helper to the man. This is why Paul says in Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. Look that key word, your own husband. And unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own husband in everything. My brothers and sisters, we we can't forget the women. Because behind every good man, there is a woman. Solomon puts it this way in Proverbs 18 and 22. Whosoever. Find it the wife, find it a good thing, and attain it favor of the Lord. I like Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 11 and 3. He reiterates again that the head of the man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. In other words, somebody got a covering at every level. And the question is, are you covered? The second thing we see in the text tonight is a humble man. Humility is the essential for establishing a right relationship with God and other people. A humble man is one that fears God and takes his rightful place by putting God first. And this is why Jesus said, but seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. A humble man is one who is thankful for each day and thankful for what he has. They're grateful for the people in their lives and the opportunities they have been given in order to serve the Lord. Luke 14 and 11 says, For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. And our third and final point, the heart. The heart. All through the Bible, everything is considered to be a matter of heart. If the, body, if the heart never gets its rest, 
Don't you know you'll be anxious? Yes, sir. Don't you know if you're worrying? Mm -hmm. You know your heart can't rest? Yes, sir. Don't you know if you're up all night? Sure. Your mind will sway? Yes, sir. And eventually you'll become exhausted? Mm -hmm. And your heart will begin to have a different heartbeat? Yes. Because your heart needs rest. Yes, yes, yes. But this is why we're reminded. If the heart do not get the proper oxygen, if the heart do not get the proper rest, don't you know they say you're about ready for cardiac arrest? Amen. Amen. This is the physical heart. But what about the spiritual heart? Because this is what we're dealing with today. The spiritual heart. Is your heart healthy? Do you seek the Lord in the morning? Do you seek the Lord in the noonday? Do you seek the Lord in the evening? Well, do you seek the Lord in the nighttime? Well, then if you're doing all that, then why are you up? Yeah. All night. Yeah. Because if you're in your proper place, yes, sir. and God promised to be up anyway, then why are you up? <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, people can dress up well, yes, sir. and their appearance can fool you. Yes, sir. And this is what God told Samuel. Uh -huh. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at the countenance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man seeth. For man looketh at the outward appearance, yes. but the Lord looketh at the heart. So my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Paul says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, yes. joy, oh, peace, yes. long-suffering, yes. gentleness, yes. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and the lust. Yes. Yes. I like this one. The Apostle Paul put things in perspective, Pastor Cunningham, as I prepared to hit the runway this morning. He put things in perspective that there's power in one man. Right. Yeah. And as I looked at your text, it said, don't take a whole lot of men. Yeah. But in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, for as by one man, Yes. Disobedience, mm -hmm. many were made sinners. Yes. Right. So by the obedience of one man yes. shall many be made righteous. Yes. Yes. From this passage, mm -hmm. Adam and Jesus are sometimes known as two men. Yes. 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 I know you've seen the truck says, a truck and two men. Two men. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> Between them, they represent all humanity. And everyone is identified with Adam, no matter how it is. You're born into sin. But by Jesus, one can be made righteous. And look at it, by one man's disobedience. Adam's disobedience makes sinners. But Jesus' obedience makes many righteous. Yes, that's right. That's right. Like the saints of old, God is still looking for a few good men. Yeah. I can prove it to you. There on Mount Sinai, God had Moses to do his bidding. And you remember he led the children out of bondage through the Red Sea. And you know who Moses is, the one who brought the Ten Commandments. Yes, 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 there at Mount Arad, God had Noah. You know Noah, don't you? Yes, yes, the one who built an ark and took his family aboard yes, and two of every kind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then there is Mount Moriah. Well, uh, God had Abraham. You do know Abraham, don't oh, you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
the one who demonstrated his love in order to sacrifice yes, his son Isaac. Yeah. And there at Mount Carmel, you know Mount Carmel, right? Hallelujah. There where Elijah was going up against them false prophets. Yes. And he reminded them that I serve the true and living God. Yes. And the Bible says Elijah built an altar. Yes. Put everything upon it. Pour water on it. And he said, try my God. And the Bible said, fire came down from heaven. And they decided, said, let's try your God. Because your God is able to bring fire from heaven. But then there is Calvary. You know Calvary, right? Because of Calvary, the world needed salvation. And it had to come through a man. Yeah. And I can hear God saying, I got somebody. Yeah. For the Bible said he came down through 40 and two generations. Yeah. The Bible said he was born of yes. Yes. the Virgin Mary. Yeah. And his name was called Emmanuel, yeah. which means God is with us. Yeah. And at the age of 12, yeah. this man says, I must be about my father's business and because of the fruit of his labor the bible says he healed the sick he brought sight to the blind he made the lame walk he made the deaf hear he fed the hungry with two fish and five barley loaves the bible says he turned water and to wine. Yes, yes. But then this man, yes. by the name of Jesus, yes. one Friday they arrested him. Yes. Marched him from judgment hall yes. to judgment hall. Yes. They beat him. Yes. They whipped him. Yes. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. Yes. They put a cross upon his shoulder. Yes. And he marched. Yes. You do know he marched up, yes. right? Yes. He marched up Calvary Hill. Yes. And this man, this man. This man. Gave his, ha- his, his hands to the nails. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, his God. feet to the rivets. Yes. But this man yes. says, yes. if I be lifted up, yes. I'll draw yes. all oh. men oh. unto me. Yes. Yes. And you do know he still got drawing power, yes. right? Yes. For the Bible says the blood will never yes. lose its power. Yes. They pierced him in his side. Yes. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. Yes. You do know he died, don't you? He died for you and he died for me. He died to set all men free. But that's not the end of the story. They took this man, put him in another man's tomb. A man by the name of Joseph Amathea. And this man stayed in the grave all night Friday. Stayed in the grave all day Saturday. In the grave all night Saturday night. But I'm thankful that this man, by the name of Jesus, he got up. You do know he got up, don't you? This man got up. Not with some power. Not with Alabama power. Not with Georgia power. But with all power. He got up. You do know he got up. But that's not the end. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. Interceding on behalf of you and me. But I'm thankful today, family, as we celebrate this men's day. Well, Jesus did what he said. Yes, he did. He finished what he started. Yes. What about you? God never promised the road to be easy. But he promised to always be there. When you feel like giving up men, call on Jesus. When your way get hard, yeah. call on Jesus. Yeah. When it feel like everything is spinning out of control, yeah. I encourage you to call oh. on Jesus. On Jesus. Yeah. The songwriter said, just a little talk. Yes, sir. Just a little talk. Yes, sir. With Jesus yes. will make everything. everything. Don't you know it'll make everything? Yeah. everything. All right. Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? He'll turn your 
midnight and today. <laughs> He'll make your frown become happy. This is what he's done. Because of this one man who went to Calvary to die for the sins of this world. And because of this one man, we now have eternal life. Because of this one man, we can all tell our family and our children about a man named Jesus. We're standing all over the building. We're going to offer Christ to you. I didn't take two hours. <laughs> Let Jesus we offer Christ to you. For you. Come on, sing. We offer Christ. Sing, Dick. Sing. Will that be one? Yes, he will. I know he will. I know he will. Same day. God bless you, may keep your ears up. Truly, truly, our heart burned from the Amen. words of the man of God has spoken this morning. This morning, looking for a few good men. I didn't put looking on that because that's the marine motto. I know it. <laughs> well, I say a few good men, so. I didn't want to put the Marines on my thing. I was looking. I'm not looking for a good man. I just want a few good men. <laughs> thank you to God. But Pastor, my heart's Thank Appreciate you. you man. I was looking for an acronym this morning, but I didn't get one this morning. I just got head, humble, and heart. So I got to work on something out there. But I appreciate Pastor Dan. We have great strength for you. Really, really thank you. And we would like to thank you for all your graces uh, with us in your presence for our men day program. Special thanks to the men that organized this and the women's in the background, like the deep back the pastor said, behind every good man, it's a good woman. They don't say that one, it's a good woman, because she's gonna keep us straight. And we just wanna thank you and uh and we I, you, we, we really wanna bless you and thank you for all that you've done, Pastor Daniel, you and your wife and friendship for coming up today and enjoying with us. And not the last time, because I think I got you for another program, but We'll get to that later on. Uh, I got something for you, though, before we finish this up. Just for a token of our appreciation, okay. you coming here is okay. a token, and I, we can't pay you, but Amen. we can give you something for some gas, because gas is hot. <laughs> <laughs> we can give you a little something for some gas and stuff to get you back, get you back down that road. <laughs> So, you know, and I really do want to thank you for coming. I really enjoyed the men. Thank you, men, for coming. Thank you for coming from down from Bluff Spring. We really appreciate you for coming and joining and serving with us. My brother back there, God bless you, and God keep you. Love to see you down here. So if all minds and hearts are clear before I, we go over, I'm going to have Pastor Daniel to come back. And I want to let y'all know that no, we don't bring you up here and don't feed you. Pastor Worthen told me that you don't never bring nobody to your house and you don't feed them. So I, that's what he taught me. And so we got food back there. So I'm going to ask Pastor Daniel to come back and bless the food and give us the benediction. 
Amen. 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 You have something? Well, you ready to go. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready to go too. All right. I like this joke. I am just messing with you. Amen. I just, just want to thank my wife. want to thank Friendship. Just wave your hand. Uh, they back there. We, you know, we, we normally, I told Pastor Cunningham, we normally visit other churches, but uh, I was told that the pastor can't come down here all the way by himself, Pastor Cunningham. I had to have an escort to make sure I get out of town. <laughs> so I might stay around too much. So, so I might get kidnapped. So, right, so, I, right. so but hey, man, we, it's all in laughter. I pray that something was said today to, to encourage you. And the men, we, we have a tough job, but uh, as Pastor Cunningham said, all we need is a few of us uh, to do God's bidding. And you know God don't need a whole lot to do anything. Amen. Amen. And as I was wrestling with these messages, uh, I was thinking about Psalm 1, verse 1 through 6, but I'm glad God gave me what I thought was fitting for the occasion today. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank the committee. I want to see if my wife has anything else to say, any of the deacons or any other members of friendship. I want to see if they have anything to say before we prepare to get out of here. Nothing else but I can say at uh, Springfield, we felt the love when we came through the door. Amen. Amen. We appreciate it. Amen. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who, who told me that I should have just came up to the pulpit and preached? Somebody, I, I forget who, who, who was it was. <laughs> If you don't know, I love my Sunday school, and it's hard for me to hard for me to stay out uh, because anytime the word is spoken, you want to be present Amen. to partake of the meal that is being prepared. Amen. It's a shame that the meal is prepared and you don't never come to the table. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. God has a full platter, All right. buffet style. Amen. You can come get what you want, Amen. even if you can't eat it all. You can share it with somebody else. Amen. Amen. If all heads and minds are clear, standing all over the building, just have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you and we worship you. We thank you for the occasion. We thank you for Greater Springfield. We thank you for Pastor Cunningham and his lovely wife. We thank you for the congregation. We thank you for friendship traveling with us. We thank you for the men that are being honored on today. We ask you to give them whatever they need to stay strong, Father God. We ask you to strengthen them where they're weak, build them up where they're torn down. Keep this congregation together, Father God. We know they don't, te- they don't need a whole lot of people to do anything. Amen. You said where well, two or three are gathered in your name, that there you will be in the midst. Have your way right now. Father God, we know that food has been prepared. But we thank you for the spiritual food that have already been preached. But thank you for the physical food. That it may have nourishment for our physical body. Bless this food in a mighty way. Father God, we thank you on today. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, to rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. And the church says, Amen. 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 Go in peace. Hey, don't leave with that gift I need now. There's a fool back there. Appreciate you. What about giving a little something? God, you I know you're a little angry there. I was trying. I had. I'm a little bit angry there. I had his. I had his and her. That's what I was saying. I said, well, it ain't me and the women. I could have used his. Yeah. 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 Yeah.